Hi and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at how you can create horizontal tabs for your site using the horizontal tabs widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. We are on the page where you can see some examples of how this widget can be used and its possible stylization options. These examples are clickable so they provide an accurate preview and demo of how this widget behaves and the things you can make with it. From the examples, you can also see that the Horizontal Tabs widget includes all kinds of customization and stylization options. Those include different typography settings, text colors, background colors, and more. The widget's many options will let you customize it to match your site design perfectly. Additionally, you can combine this widget with other elements you like. Essentially, you can combine the widgets from the key add-ons collection to your heart's content. So, let's see how the Horizontal Tabs widget from the Key Add-ons for Elementor plugin is used and how to work with its options. Head over to the back end. In the Elementor sidebar, search for Horizontal Tabs. There it is. Drag it over to the right. By default, the widget looks like this. It has two tabs, Example Title 1 and Example Title 2. And both contain some placeholder content. Each is represented by an item on the left. And you can add more items by clicking on this button here. I'll just add one more so I have a total of three items. OK, now the first thing I'll do is replace the text content in the items with my own. To do that, you need to open each item and type over the text inside it. The title is replaced here in the title field. And I'll change mine just a sec. OK, and this is where you can change the text content of your tab. I plan on adding a lot of content in my tab, so I'll need a while to type it all in. To spare you the wait, let's just speed through this part. And here we are. My item content has been updated with more meaningful text. Now, if you like, you can make adjustments to the format and look of this text. For starters, there's the option to change the HTML tag for this text. Or make it bold, italic, underlined. We can format it as a bullet point list or a numbered list. We can link it. Then this full screen option is for this text editor. It doesn't affect the text itself. And if you click here, you can open additional options such as text color, alignment, and so on. There's also the text editing mode if you want to style this text with CSS or add some code to it. OK, I'll go back and replace the text in the other two items now. Since that means there will be a lot of typing in the coming minutes, I'll skip ahead with the video. All right, done. We can check the tabs now. As you can see, I added new content to all of them, so there's no placeholder text left. Since that's sorted, we can consider the settings below these, developer tools. When we open them, we can see there's just one option here. We can switch its setting to Yes and get it to display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode. That's this text here. Then we can easily copy it for use elsewhere on our site. OK, now let's move on to the next tab and see how we can style our element. The first option in here lets us adjust the individual title alignment. In order to show you how this option works, I'll first need to adjust the width of the tab titles. And that's done under Spacing Style, with the Title Width option. When I move this slider to increase the value, the space my tab titles get becomes wider. With this added space, there's room to see the alignment change. It's set to left by default, but you can switch that to center or right. I'll leave mine on the left. OK. And I'll reset the width. There. Now, the next option in Style is the Title Tag. You can set it to anything from H1 to H6 or the P tag. I'll stick with H5. Following that, we have the title typography options. With these options, we can pick the font family for our title. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. You can also pick the font size here. Use the slider or type in a value, whichever you prefer. Then we have the weight option where we can pick any of these values, such as bold, to determine the font weight or pick one of the numerical values. In any case, I'll leave mine on default. Then we have the text transform option, which we can use to make the title uppercase, lowercase, capitalized, or normal, which is the same as our default. 
And using style, we can make our text normal, which is the same as default, or turn it italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add an underline, an overline, a line through, or we can use none of these, which is our default setting. Then the line height option lets us add a bit more space around the titles. Its value is in M's by default, but you can switch it to pixels if you like. Finally, the letter spacing option lets us create more space between letters in our titles. OK, that's all we have in the typography options. After that, there are these two switches showing different options. There's normal and active hover. By toggling between them, we reveal options for either the normal tab display or the display when we open or hover over a tab. So let's see what we have for each. Under normal, there's title color. You can pick any color you like and it applies to all the tab titles at the same time. I'm going to add a hex code for the color I want to use. Six zero stands for solid black. There it is. Below that, we have the background type. There are two choices, classic and gradient. Each has its own options. With classic, we can set a single color background for our horizontal tabs. Alternatively, there's the option to upload an image as your title background. Just click here to upload one. The option underneath this lets us set a border around the tab titles. There's the solid type, and you'll need to increase the width so it becomes visible. Then, if you don't like solid, there's also the double, dotted, dashed, and grooved border type. I'll set this back to none. And then we can take a look at the gradient background type. With gradient, you can create a two color gradient fill for your background. Start by picking the first color, say this one. Then you can use the location option to adjust how much space the first color will take up. And the second location option will let you do the same for the second color. You can set the second color right above this. Now the gradient background can be linear or radial. Linear is the one we have right now. And if we change that to radial, you'll get a different look. With this, we'll be able to pick the origin point of the first color using the options available in this drop down menu. There are all kinds of positions you can set center left, center center, and you can try out all the others to see which one you like best. As for the linear gradient background, if you enable it, you'll be able to change the angle where the two colors overlap. And that's it for the gradient fill. I'll reset all these background settings and we can take a look at the active hover options. In here we have the title active hover color. With it you can make your titles change color when they're hovered over or when their tab is open. I'll set mine to be red and add a hex code for the shade I want. There. OK, then we have the background type options. And they're the same as the ones we've seen earlier under normal. The settings are the same, only these apply to the active and hover display. After that, we have the title active hover underline height. To be able to show it to you, I first need to pick a color for my title underline. I'll set one that's very close to my title active hover color so they match when they appear. And then I'll add a height for my underline. And voila! Now my active tab title is distinct from all the others. We also have an option to adjust the underline offset. This lets us move the underline up or down so it gets closer or farther away from the title. I'll set a negative value for mine, minus 2, to separate the underline from the title a bit. And our last option in the active hover settings is the title active hover underline draw. This lets us pick the animation for how the underline will appear. If you pick from right, it looks like this. And if you pick from center, it looks like this. You can also set none, and there will be no animated appearance effect when someone hovers over a tab. And we have the default setting from left, which I'm going to keep. Following this, we have some style settings for the text content of our horizontal tabs. The first option is text color, which, as the name suggests, lets us pick the color of the text. Then we have the text typography settings. These are identical to the ones we've seen for title typography, so there's no need for another go over. Below that, we have the text background color. You can set whichever color you like and it won't affect the titles. This is only for the text. And finally, we have the border type option. 
We've seen one just like it before, so I won't go through everything again. But I do want to show you a possible combination of settings for it. So generally, this creates a border around the text content. I'll pick solid and set a width so we can see it. And we get a normal border, right? But you can click here to delink the fields and set the border for each side separately. And I'll give it a color, a light gray shade. Perfect. Now it looks like all my tab titles are underlined together and the active one pops out from that line. So that's just one possible combination of settings. You can explore different combinations to see what works for you. Okay, after this we have a set of settings for spacing style. The first option lets us set a title padding. So if I increase the values, my tabs with the titles expand all around. If you wish to set different values for different sides of the padding, you can do so by clicking here to delink the fields and then typing in the values you want. That's what I'll do and set 15 pixels on the right, 14 at the bottom and 15 on the left. The top can stay blank. And I'm happy with this. Then we can move on to the content padding option. This one lets us adjust the space around the text content. You can see how it moves as I increase the value. And I want to set specific values for this one as well. I'll delink the fields and I only want to set the top padding here. I'll put 26 pixels for the top padding and the other values can stay blank. My element looks good. After this we have the title margin option. You can increase the values to enlarge the margins all around the titles evenly. Alternatively you can delink the fields, which is what I'll do, and put 35 pixels for the right margin. This gives me more space between my tab titles. And finally, the title width option. We've seen this one at the very start of the video. And this is how it looks like with my current settings. Okay, this is it. I've finished my element. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful options for positioning, responsiveness, entrance animations and more. But since it's available for all elemental widgets and not unique to our horizontal progress bar widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. And if we look on the right, this is how my horizontal tabs will look and behave on the page. Everything looks good and behaves as it should. To finish up, I'd like us to take one last look at the widgets page. Having gone over the options in the back end, you should now know how to make all of these variations. The page simply shows you some examples whose designs you can mirror or use as inspiration. Here for one is the design I used for this tutorial. Of course you can always create something completely unique. You just need to decide which of the possibilities offered by the horizontal tabs widget work best with the style and design of your site. Ultimately, I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making elements can be with the key add-ons for Elementor plugin and its horizontal tabs widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching!